How's it going, everybody? I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today, we're doing a shop tour. Let's get started. All right, so before we get started, there are two things that I wanted to mention. One is this is going to be kind of an abbreviated view of uh, you know, a shop tour. So if there's any specific tool, concepts, layouts, whatever it is that you want to know more about in detail, please leave a comment down below in the box and I will do my best to get back to you with as much detail as I can. Uh, the second thing is if you're new to the channel, Welcome, it's wonderful having you here. My name is Suman, I am a hobbyist woodworker and on this channel we typically do project build videos, we make jigs uh, for woodworking and kind of talk about tips and tricks of woodworking in general. Uh, so if that is of interest to you, please check out some of my other videos and if you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel and support the work that I do. I greatly appreciate it in advance. All right, let's get on to the tour. So this is probably the widest view that I can give you of the shop. And the purpose of this is to kind of give you an idea of what this space looks like in uh, as much as I can show you in a single frame. Uh, we are currently in a three car garage that measures 20 feet by 30 feet, and it is predominantly dedicated towards woodworking. Um, so we're going to start our discussion by talking about some of the tools that we have in the center of the garage. And when we're done talking about that, we're going to start in that corner with the electrical panel first, and then we'll slowly kind of go all the way around the garage until we kind of come back to that point, and that'll conclude our discussion for today. So starting in the center of my garage, I have three primary power tools that take up vast majority of the floor space in my garage. Uh, so I have a table saw in here with a cast iron extension wing for a router table. I've got a band saw and a drum sander. And they're kind of arranged in a triangular tool island shape that kind of allows you to maximize the longest run uh, option for a piece of material on each individual tools. So in this arrangement, I'm able to do nine feet long boards on my table saw actually a lot longer on my band saw, and about nine feet again on the drum sander. Starting with the table saw, I have the Sosta Professional Cabinet Saw. Uh, of course, I purchased the saw because of its safety feature, but you know, when you take the safety out of the equation, it's still a tremendously good saw, and uh, I have zero regrets with that purchase whatsoever. Uh, and to boot, I actually got this brand new <laughs> at an eBay auction for I think like $1,400. Uh, so that worked out really well, of course, because they're, I think they cost about twice as much nowadays. Um, but even if that wasn't the case, I would have probably bought this saw anyway at full price um, because it's just that good of a saw. So on the extension side of my table saw, I have the Bench Dog Cast Iron Extension Router Table. And to it, I have mounted the Triton TRA-001. And the reason why I did that is because the Triton actually lets you do above table adjustments without any extra hardware. So you basically save like 300 bucks on not having to purchase a router lift and so see all you have to do is drill a hole and this thing comes with the router and it lets you do the adjustments and on top of that the Triton TRA-001 is an absolute beast it has so much power to be able to plow through anything uh, that you throw at it. As far as the bandsaw goes, I have the Laguna 14BX. This is very, very similar to the extremely popular Laguna 1412. Uh, some of the distinguishing feature between this and the 1412 is that uh, this one's a little beefier all the way around. And it's, it's got more weight, it's got heavier gauge of metal everywhere, uh, but this also has a safety feature. So you can use a foot pedal that'll cut the power to the motor and it'll also bring the blade to a stop much quicker than without it. So that's the primary reason why I purchased it. As far as the blade goes, I am using a uh, Resaw King by Laguna. This is a carbide tooth blade. Uh, prior to this, I used to use the blades by Timberwolf. Those were just uh, high-speed steel, and uh, they work really well out of the box, but they get dull pretty quickly, and the changeover can be annoying, and actually the cost can add up. Um, and so when I had the Timberwolf blades, I purchased the Laguna Resaw King as a joke. I was thinking like, okay, Laguna, you're calling this the Resaw King. Are you serious? How full of yourself can you be? And then I purchased it and I tested it out head to head. This is better. It's better in every way. Um, so, you know, if you have doubts about uh, Resaw King blades or other carbide tooth blades, chances are you're gonna probably love it once you get one. And the last tool in the center of my shop is this Supermax 2550 drum sander. So it'll let you do 25 inches in a single pass or uh, because of the cantilevered open-ended design here, it'll let you do up to 50 inches in a double pass. Uh, so you can do anything from like, you know, a small cutting board 
all the way up to a tabletop in here, no problem. Uh, most of you who watch my channel, you probably already know uh, and you've already seen it, I use a drum sander at every single opportunity that I get because they are a fantastic finessing tool for thicknessing, it also lets you do end grain, yeah, it's just a wonderful tool. Okay, so we're going to start in the corner here and then we'll go along the perimeter and I'll talk about all the tools that we have on the wall or against the wall. Um, so to start off with, the most important thing in here to me is that gray box. That is an electrical sub-panel and I am so very fortunate to be able to have 100 amp in my garage and believe me when I say I wired the crap out of this shop in the best way that I can think of. Um, or an electrician did, but I had a hand in the planning process. And uh, while to most folks this may seem a little boring, a little mundane, to me, that is the sexiest thing I have in the shop. And right below the sexiest thing, I have the dirtiest thing in my shop. And that is the Harbor Freight compressor. Um, it's a compressor, it does its job. I don't use compressors a whole lot, but I did use uh, the air hose reel. I kind of ran it all the way up and to the middle of my shop. And then I have a, a, a cord, like an air hose reel in there that I can use to kind of get access to anywhere in the shop that I need. And I primarily use it for uh, spray finishing. So next to the electrical, I have the clamp rack. Uh, this is where I keep most of my clamps. Uh, you will notice the vast majority of my clamps are parallel clamps, and that's because I prefer them. Uh, they're just better in almost every way. There are times when you may want an F-style clamp, and I have a couple for those types of instances, but generally speaking, parallel clamps are my go-to. And right below that, I have a crosscut sled. I have a crosscut sled that is at a 45 degree miter, because every so often you find yourself in a situation where a crosscut sled at the miter is actually pretty useful so uh, it's been really nice to have that and then I have a picture frame uh, making jig um, eventually I'll probably do a picture frame making video and I'll show you how that jig gets used and we'll talk more about that so moving along up here I have two sets of Acro Mills small parts organizer uh, so basically what it is is a whole bunch of tiny little drawers and uh, it's semi translucent so you can see what's in it and it is a wonderful way to organize all the little crap <laughs> in your shop that can easily get lost or you might not have a place for so this kind of helps me capture all of that so I usually put you know screws nuts bolts uh, washers threaded inserts uh, figure eights, that kind of stuff is what I keep in here and it's been really really handy having that. And behind me I have the Shapoko CNC machine. This is the XL so uh, it lets you do I believe 16 inches by 32 inches. Um, you know it's a CNC machine, it's a tool uh, just like any other. It gives you precision, repeatability, you can design it ahead of time so there's a lot of convenience to it and I actually really like the option of having one around. Uh, the only downside to the CNC machine is it's not bigger. Um, if I had my way, I would probably have a 4x8 CNC machine, but I really don't want to give up the floor space and I generally rarely work on anything that big, so um, this is an excellent tool to have you know, uh, to be able to do some of the smaller precision work. So getting a little bit of a wider perspective in here, uh, down below the tool wall, I've got, you know, some usable space actually. So what I'm going to do eventually and in the near future is I'm going to build a uh, kind of a slimmer depth, maybe like 14 inch deep uh, cabinetry down below uh, where I'm going to have some drawers, some cubbies to be able to store a whole bunch more stuff. Um, I also have a very dinky little trash can in here and uh, this is usually where I keep all of my jokes uh, for this channel and you'll notice that it is empty. So moving along from the CNC machine, what you see behind me is probably what is most familiar to you if you are a fan of the channel or if you watch any of my videos because this is predominantly what I use as a backdrop for my videos. This is a French cleat wall that is about eight feet long on the long side and a little over four feet long on the other side. To the leftmost part of the wall is the router bit holder and that is a project video that we did on this channel actually. So if you like the way that looks and you may want to make one for yourself, check out that video. And I also have my head uh, tools in here and when it comes to woodworking I tend to be uh, on a hybrid uh, woodworker approach where I'll use power tools to hog most of the material and then whenever necessary or useful or practical I use hand tools to do a lot of the finessing work uh, and so these hand tools are great for that and what I have here are a combination of Lanesin and Veritas products uh, they tend to be some of the you know the better tool makers in the woodworking world right now and I have the block plane and the rabbit plane from Lanesin because I think it looks the prettiest and I don't think the Veritas ones look as good um, but I really am a big fan of the bevel up planes from uh, Veritas and I have the smoother the jack and the jointer um, I also have you know a couple of other little things here and there the other thing that I really love 
is this Japanese hand plane. I think it's like 50 bucks off of Amazon. Honestly, it's really, really good. Uh, it does take a little bit of skill, a little bit of tuning to get it to work the way that you would want it to. Uh, but once you get it dialed in and once you've kind of put in your labor of love onto it, this is amazing. So moving along, I have uh, kind of a catch-all down below here where a bunch of crap that I don't really have a, a specific tool holder or things that I don't want to make for, they just go down here. Um, up in here, I've got, again, more crap that I kind of want a holder for. <laughs> um, so it tends to be like some of the marking measuring tools as well as, you know, drivers and all of that stuff. And up above here, I have all of my Japanese hand saws and you know, they're actually absolutely wonderful. They're way better than your Veritas, Lenison's, your custom made stuff. I don't care what it is. The Japanese saws are going to be better and I really cannot be convinced otherwise. Um, because they're just, they're just so far ahead. I, I'm not gonna go into it. Um, but what is kind of difficult about these Japanese saws is storing them. Uh, they're kind of awkward and they're pretty long and they don't really easily go into you know, a conventional place. I've made very many different iterations of ways to be able to store this on a French cleat wall and ultimately I gave up and I found that these little uh, tool holders from you know, like big box stores from Home Depot or Lowe's, they actually do a really good job of holding Japanese saws. And so if you've got a bunch of Japanese saws and you don't know how to store them, I highly recommend you go about this way because it, it actually works really well. And to the right of the saw, I have some measuring tools that are like proper steel measuring tools. My Sterrett and other, you know, reputable companies that make precision instruments. Uh, when it comes to precision instruments like that, particularly measuring ones, I tend to go for the steel over aluminum. I see a lot of woodworkers in, uh, in the YouTube space that use woodpeckers. It's like the red color stuff that you see behind, you know, everybody's background. And I really don't get it. I mean, like, it's made out of aluminum, right? Have you ever tried using a marking uh, knife and strike a line on a piece of aluminum? If you kind of sway just a little, you can easily slice that aluminum, at least the edge of it. So what's the point of having a precision instrument that you're just gonna chop up, uh, you know, with your marking knife? I don't get it, it's not for me. No thanks, woodpecker. And then down below, I have some uh, chisels. I have the Stanley Sweethearts, which is what I started out with, and they're actually really, really good chisels. Uh, once you kind of tune them up, and they do need to be tuned up quite a bit, um, but once you get them past that point, they work really, really well. Uh, I also have some Japanese chisels, of course, because I love Japanese tools, but they're also, they're works of art to me. Moving along to this side of the wall, um, I've got some PPs, I've got a whole bunch of sandpaper, um, and a couple of like screws and you know knickknacks up there. This is kind of a catch-all for a whole bunch of random stuff. And you know, this is um, my take on holding power tools. Uh, nothing special about it, I'm sure you've seen plenty of videos on those types of builds, uh, so I'm not gonna go into it uh, too much. But the one thing that I will say though, is whenever it comes to handheld power tools, uh, if it operates on a battery, chances are I've got the DeWalt, and uh, if it's not battery powered and I want you know a little bit more power um, and it's corded, then chances are it's Festool. There are a couple of little exceptions, but that's usually what I tend to go for because I want the continuity of the platform. So moving along, uh, here is my workbench. It is not terribly big, it's like six feet long, uh, 22 inches wide, but it is really thick, heavy, and it does the job really well. Uh, so does my workbench, by the way. Uh, down below, I've got some storage for you know some tools that I will eventually move out into the cubbies that I said that I was going to make. And you know, I, I never really made this workbench myself. Um, there was a gentleman who was moving out of town, he used to be a woodworker, and uh, he wanted to get rid of his workbench, and I purchased it from him for like 300 bucks, and uh, that was a really good deal and um, you know it saved me from having to put in so much work in building one but I feel like when it comes to woodworking having a workbench is like a rite of passage so uh, on this channel within the next couple of months or so we're going to be building a brand new workbench that I think is going to be super freaking awesome and you're going to love seeing it so uh, stay tuned for that video. Moving along to dust collection, I have the uh, Festool CT26 in here, and I've got just like a random rigid uh, shop vac in there that is attached to a dust deputy, so it's got like the two-stage uh, dust collection to it. Um, the Festool, I predominantly use it on my uh, sanders and a little knickknack here and there, but it's really mostly used for sanding. And the Rigid is actually my main uh, dust collector in the shop. You know, unsexy as it is to buy a dust collector, I know uh, in my heart that a larger CFM uh, dust collector is going to do a better job. So eventually I will move on to a bigger, better dust collector, but I can't say that I'm dissatisfied with the way this uh, setup works. 
This is the Jet JJP12HH. This is a combination planer and jointer. Um, I actually didn't really want to buy this particular one. I wanted to buy the Hammer, I think it's an A331 or something like that. And the reason for it is because it has better reviews. Uh, this one, you know, I've seen mixed reviews on it and I've, I've heard that, you know, it doesn't really hold calibration very well over time. And that was really concerning to me. Uh, but it came up in uh, Craigslist Marketplace and somebody was willing to let it go with the helical cutter head for 1700 bucks. And uh, if you don't know this tool, you know, currently MSRP, I think it's like 4,600, 4,800 bucks or something like that. So obviously that was a really good deal and it decided to jump on it and take a leap of faith. And I've got to say, it definitely holds tuning really well. I just, it takes a while to tune it in the first place, but it holds it really, really well. Um, so it can let you do planing and jointing uh, up to 12 inches wide. And this is a tremendous time saver because it lets you mill lumber. Uh, and so that you can actually have flat square stock and you can actually focus on woodworking. Um, the other thing is about the helical cutter head, you know, it's a luxury tool for sure. Uh, but the helical cutter head is absolutely amazing because it does a really good job of doing tear free cuts, irrespective of grain orientation, uh, funkiness of the grain or anything like that. And overall, I've been extremely happy with this tool. No complaints whatsoever. Behind me is the 17 inch jet drill press. Uh, I believe this is the more woodworking centric one because it has the bigger uh, bed down below. Um, this is a floor standing model. And I think, you know, when it comes to woodworking, a drill press is necessary because it's really, really handy sometimes uh, when you're trying to drill perfectly straight perpendicular holes. But I think, you know, a bigger, more expensive floor standing model like this is definitely not necessary. And in fact, I would say it's unnecessary. Uh, the tabletop models that are more inexpensive side, they're actually gonna be more than adequate for woodworking purpose. Moving along here, uh, I've got a pretty heavy duty shelf in here. Um, so this is kind of a little bit of a catch all. So in the bottom you see I have a lawnmower. Uh, usually in the winter time I switched it up with a snowblower. I've got some scrap pieces of more exotic woods down there. On the second shelf I've just got a bunch of tools that I don't have a space uh, for elsewhere and I don't use them frequently enough to really give them you know, a proper home. Um, above that, I've just got a bunch of scrap lumber. Now, of course, I find this shelf to be extremely valuable, uh, but you know, if you have a, uh, a garage and you have a smaller car, I highly recommend getting a shelf like this pretty much no matter what. It, it doesn't matter if you're a woodworker or not, because um, you know, you're still able to pull in a smaller car in the garage, and this lets you hold on to a ton of stuff. So highly recommend it. It's the, the Gladiator brand, um, and I think this is the 72 inch tall, um, eight feet wide version. It's really, really good, love it. Uh, this here is the Lincoln Electric 140MP. It is a uh, welder. Um, you know, as a woodworker, I really have very little interest in welding, uh, but I also love the marriage of metal and wood together in my projects. And so out of necessity and out of curiosity, I got over my fear of welding because it seems pretty terrifying. Uh, and I bought a, a Harbor Freight model and I gave it a go. And what I learned is that I'm a terrible welder, uh, but I can grind away all of my mistakes and still make it halfway decent after it's painted. Uh, um, so that's kind of how I got into it. And it's, you know, it's not as hard as you would think if you just are a little patient and you learn through it. Um, I then recently moved over to this one because this lets you do TIG welding. And that's something I'm interested in learning and I want to know more about. But this is absolutely unnecessary. I think, you know, our standard Harbor Freight welder for most woodworkers is going to be plenty good. So this wall is where I keep all of my household gardening and that sort of tools. Uh, you'll notice that this wall is painted kind of this gray color and that's on purpose. I wanted to delineate all of my woodworking space in all white and this be something different. Um, I wanted everything else to be all white because I want the light to reflect everywhere. Uh, not only is it good for woodworking to be able to see what you're working on, uh, but it's also good for filming. Um, and in this side, which is a little bit further away from all of my major tools and for all of the areas where I would do woodworking, I painted it gray. It does eat up a lot of the light, um, but you know it's not a problem because I'm not really filming here a whole lot. And finally, down in here is where I keep a good bunch of material that I plan on using on projects in the near future. Uh, I actually don't store all of my lumber in the garage. Uh, that way I have a little bit more breathing room in here and I keep a good chunk of my lumber in the basement of our house. Um, so, you know, if you look carefully in here, you could probably figure out what some of my future projects on this channel is going to be. I'll give you one hint, uh, and I think I mentioned that before. Uh, you'll notice that there's some purple heart back here. I think I have like almost 150 board feet back here. Purple is a color theme for my channel. If you watch all of my thumbnails in one page, you'll know that there's color purple everywhere. I'm wearing a purple hoodie right now. Uh, there's usually like sprinkle of like 
purple light in random things uh, you'll, you may have noticed. Uh, keep an eye out for those, by the way. I do kind of sneak them in here and there. Um, so Purple Heart is important because it has the color purple, and the workbench that I, we plan on building in the near future is going to be all out of Purple Heart. And uh, so that's going to be a super exciting project that I'm uh, just thrilled to do. Uh, I'm still waiting on a couple of hardware to come in to be able to do that, but yeah. Um, so this is where I keep all of the future project content. Well, that's all I've got going on in the shop today, guys. Um, I did wanted to mention that this is a dream shop for me. Uh, you know, it took me a long time to get to this point, and uh, this has been a long time coming, and I've had this shop in this state for like four months now, uh, and I am just so thrilled to be able to have all of the things that I want in my shop to be able to do my hobby that I love. Uh, but it did take me a while to get here, and if you are a newer woodworker who seem to be really enjoying the hobby, what I recommend is you make projects to sell. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. First and foremost, of course, you use the profit, you reinvest it into your hobby, you can buy more tools that let you do things that you want, right? But more importantly, along the process of making a whole bunch of stuff repetitively, you develop your skill as a woodworker, but you also learn about yourself and what style of woodworking you enjoy and what kind of tools that are actually best suited for your style of woodworking. So it's kind of like a win-win-win along those sides. But in addition to that, uh, you actually start to appreciate the tools that you have and the space that you have and everything that you've got, right? I promise you, you know, if you just throw a bunch of money up front without really putting in the time in the hobby, uh, there's a good chance that you're gonna buy a whole bunch of tools that you're not actually going to need for your style of woodworking. So anyways, you know, now that you've seen my shop, I wanted to ask you, you know, what would you change? You know, in terms of the layout, would, is there anything that you would change? Uh, in terms of the tools, is there anything that you would reduce or anything you would add to this shop? I, I know I mentioned that I want a better dust collection setup, uh, certainly something that I'm looking to add. So what would you add or take away from this setup? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, that's all for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you did, please be sure to click the like button below and consider subscribing to this channel if you're not a subscriber already. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate your support and I will see you. I do the knocking thing all the time, by the way, on the next one.